Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Microsoft Project Made Easy. Today we're going to be looking at using a checklist to review your project before you set the baseline. There's a lot involved in developing a schedule in Microsoft Project and it's very helpful if you have a checklist that you go through and you check the individual items. That way you don't miss stuff. It's hard to remember everything. I have a lot of difficulty remembering everything. So if you develop a checklist, you can use it over and over again and just use it to check off these points. Let's take a look. We've got this project schedule and I've got it as a cost loaded schedule just so, you know, I haven't done a lot of things to it, but we can sort of use this as an example. What I would probably recommend is putting in a hyperlink and I don't think I've shown people that before. If you click on a row and you right click and you go to the bottom, you can insert a hyperlink. So that brings up the insert hyperlink box. What this does is it lets you link a file to the document. It can be really helpful. I'll probably do another video on this because you can do a lot more than just linking it to a checklist. But for now, uh, I'm just going to pull up a folder. You know, if you know where your checklist is, I just happened to have previously opened it, but you just go through your files. Uh, if you have a folder with checklists, you could then click on that. And I've got MS Project Checklist. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click OK here. And so I've got my file indicated. Click OK here. And now you see a uh, hyperlink appear. Now, if I click on that, it'll say, oh, it's identified a potential security concern. Don't worry about that. Just say yes. And then it brings up your checklist. Now, I'm going to minimize this checklist uh, just so that I can then bring up my project file. There we go. So we have the checklist open right now. And this checklist has a number of items listed. It has no open ends. It has holidays are all correct. Uh, it has WBS is in correct alignment, uh, housing the, the appointed activities. No links to WBS. Review schedule from end to beginning, from beginning to end. So you see, you get the idea. Um, so let's just run through some of these points. So no open ends means I would then check this project schedule. If I click over here, it should disappear. There we go. Uh, and I would check for no open ends. I would make sure that everything is connected. So I've done this in other videos, but you would essentially look at uh, is there anything open that is not connected in the predecessors or the successor columns. Again, I'll put some links to my other videos below in the description, but you want to make sure everything is connected so that the schedule is right and that it's basically working without uh, any open ends that could give you an incorrect uh, critical path. So going back to the checklist, and if you've got it minimized, you can always just bounce back and forth so it doesn't block up your screen. Holidays are all correct. Well, I would also check in my change working time, have I got all the appropriate holidays? And usually, quite honestly, the easiest way to do that is whenever your project starts. Uh, so ours is starting in April of 2021, so back in time a little bit. Uh, you would just look at this and you would scroll through it month by month. There are all the holidays there. For us in Canada, they look like they are all represented. And if you missed one, say it was Remembrance Day and uh, you're, you're taking that off, then you could input it in at this point. But you want to make sure that they're all listed the way you want them to be listed. Okay, so if that's good, that's another uh, key point. So we could just, as we do this, click on that. Uh, no open ends. Holidays are correct. WBS is in correct uh, alignment. So then I would look at my WBS. And you could just go to the View tab and you could basically go outline and say, all right, uh, show me for level one. All right, that looks okay. Level two, yes, pre-construction, construction, closeout. They look like they're in proper alignment. Level three, and then I'm seeing the next level for that, and I see that that looks okay. Site mobilization, boom, boom, boom. I would go through it level by level, just making sure that they're indented the right way and that they make sense for my project. And if that's once I've opened them all up, uh, then and I've scrolled them, then I'd say, okay, that's a good one. All right, so I'll go down to my checklist again, 
and I'll click that one off. No links to WBS. Well, that's another thing that we don't really want to link to our work breakdown structure. Uh, it kind of confuses the program a bit. The program lets you do that, but it's not a best practice. Uh, it's best to link activities to activities. So one way to check is, well, number one, you could check all of your headings to make sure that they have no linkages to anything. And the other thing you could do is you could go to the network diagram. And in the network diagram, you can make sure that everything is open. So all subtasks are open and you could shrink it down and you should see all the parallelograms not connected to anything. If you see all the parallelograms are not connected to anything and all the activities and milestones are, uh, then you're good to go. So I would go through the whole thing like that. I'll go back and I'm going to go to my Gantt chart. I'm going to slide down and I'm going to go to uh, that checklist. We'll say good and review schedule from end to beginning. Well, I actually think it's very good idea to look at your schedule from the end and look at it backwards to the beginning. And does this make sense? Do all the predecessors make sense? Uh, this is what we call on lean construction pull planning, looking from the end to the beginning. Pull planning is a little bit more complex than that, but it's giving us a different view of our schedule. And we're looking at basically what do we need to have done? All right. So what is the predecessor for this, for us to be able to start this? And you're going backwards and thinking a little differently about it. And then start from the beginning and go forward because there's very often gaps and you can miss things. So it's really good to do it that way as well. It's very helpful if you take a look in the Gantt chart and you review your project in, sorry, in the network diagram, we're just in the Gantt chart. And we look at it here from the beginning to the end. We just scroll along, zoom into the activities. I would zoom in uh, larger than I am right now. So, you know, so you could actually read them. And I would just start that process of checking and reviewing. And some of you may say, oh, I don't have time to do all this. Well, I would say, when do you have time to do it again when you messed it up? Right. So this is the golden opportunity to uh, check these items. And that's what your checklist reminds you to do. So review schedule from end to beginning, review from beginning to end, review network diagram. You know, you take your time with that, not the quick sort of demo I've just done with you. Review all costs in cost sheet and resource sheet. OK, how do we do that? We just slide to the left. If it's a cost loaded schedule, if it's not a cost loaded schedule, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, you click the square icon box, go to the cost and check all of your costs at the different levels, at the different points, at the different activities and make sure that they make sense to you, right? They should be comparing to what you're budgeting for these items and this would have been taken from your estimate. So it's just making because it's so easy to miss stuff on this and you're going to baseline it. So you want it there so you can compare as you move through the project. The other place that's really valuable to check the costs and make sure that you've applied them correctly, really valuable, is to go to the resource sheet. And yeah, it's already there for you. It probably wouldn't be there. So it probably look like this when you go to the resource sheet. Click on the square icon box, right click, go to costs. Now, each one of these costs should be representative of what you budgeted total for that subcontractor on your project. If it's not, then that gives you an area, okay, what did I miss? Where do I go back into the schedule and apply that cost? So these should be aligning with your budget for the project, your line items for the budget. Very worthwhile checking. All right, so that's great. We'll go back to our Gantt chart. Let's go back to our checklist. How are we doing on our checklist? Review all costs and cost sheet, boom. Then I would do a spell check. So you just do a normal spell check. Uh, again, you would basically go to your, right there we are, spelling. And I would run my spell check through that, right? And once I'm satisfied with that, go back to my checklist, great. No constraints or if there is, you approve of it. So you wanna limit the amount of constraints you have in a schedule, but sometimes by accident they show up. So if you see any checkerboards down here, you would check for that. The other thing is, remember the indicator column tells you if you've done anything. If I applied a special calendar to an activity, then you'd be looking for that, right? So anything of, of note, 
double check the indicator column. This one I've kept pretty simple, but likely you'll have either special calendars or a constraint, but try to avoid the constraints. It might be that you can take that, remove that constraint and adjust the schedule so you don't need it. So it's for sure showing you the effective critical path. Very, very well worth doing that check on that. All activities are an auto schedule. It would show you if you had some of these activities in manual schedule. So remember, manual schedule is when they show up like a uh, icon like um, this uh, example here. So if you've got an activity and you've got it showing up as manually scheduled uh, like that or like this, that's not what you want to, to have indicated, right? So in this case, I don't have the task mode column showing, but I can easily insert it. So insert column task mode. And this, you notice that I've made these uh, two activities manual schedule. I want to make sure everything is auto schedule. I could do that by clicking the ones that were on manual schedule and making sure that my schedule is unimpacted by that. The other way I could do that is just select everything and go auto schedule and that should fix that problem. But still take a, it's always worth taking a look down your schedule to make sure that everything is good that way. So that was the task mode column. Usually it's in there. I deleted it from view for whatever the reason, but if it's not there, that's how you can see it. And that's very helpful to review. So that sounds good. All activities. And review the indicator column for any other flag. So again, just before you're ready to submit, take one last look. It's fine. I don't mind having that hyperlink there for my checklist. And looks good. So we've just done our uh, checklist review. And I think it's worthwhile uh, to have a checklist review. And you could customize this. Perhaps if you put in the comments other ideas that you think are good to have on the checklist, I think the community would love to hear it. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please click subscribe, the notifications, the like, and we'll see you next time. I'm Tom Stevenson, wishing you a wonderful day. Bye for now.